Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Downey and today we are going to talk about Implomaphene. In this video, I'm going to give a brief introduction into what Implomaphene is, and then we are going to look at a new study that was published comparing Implomaphene to Clomaphene citrate. So for those who don't know, Implomaphene and Zuclomaphene are two stereoisomers that make up Clomaphene citrate. Inclomaphene accounts for 68% of clomaphene citrate and zuclomaphene is 38% of clomaphene citrate. The reason they decided to create individual preparations of these stereoisomers is that it was thought inclomaphene leads to the positive antagonistic effects that clomaphene citrate have on the estrogen receptor, since both of these are selective estrogen estrogen receptor modulators, and in a few studies it was demonstrated that inclomaphene is more antagonistic than zuclomaphene, which is actually a weak agonist to the estrogen receptor, and therefore they isolated it because they thought that since clomaphene citrate results in quite pronounced effects on testosterone and fertility in men, that getting a more selective component of clomaphene would result in better outcomes. Furthermore, when looking at men who take clomiphene citrate as a form of testosterone replacement therapy, it's found that long-term use leads to a relative increase of zuclomaphene concentrations in the serum or blood in comparison to inclomaphene. And the reason it is thought that this is detrimental is because zuclomaphene in some in vivo studies in rats has been demonstrated to be toxic to testicular tissue. Some might say that zuclomaphene might actually be beneficial and we're just relying on in vitro studies to create this opinion that zuclomaphene is not beneficial in any way. Pure zuclomaphene in men with prostate cancer undergoing androgen deprivation therapy, the study hasn't been published yet, you can see the results and you will notice that zuclomaphene doesn't help with hot flashes nor did it help with improving testosterone levels. Placebo actually assisted more than the zuclomaphene itself. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get into the study that was published comparing inclomaphene to clomaphene. This is one of the first studies of its kind comparing the two. So the study is called Efficacy of Clomaphene Citrate versus Inclomaphene Citrate for male infertility treatment, a retrospective study. Already there's a limitation and that is that it is retrospective. But essentially in the study, they went back and looked at men receiving inclomaphene citrate and clomaphene citrate off-label to improve fertility, and they wanted to see what the outcomes were in comparison to each other. There are a few issues with the study, and that's mostly due to the fact that it is retrospective, and therefore they couldn't really intervene much. But essentially inclusion criteria for the study was any man over the age of 18 who had received clomiphene citrate or inclomiphene citrate monotherapy, these men also either had to have primary infertility, abnormal semen parameters, or hypogonadism. There you can already see an issue since these problems can be correlated, the abnormal semen parameters that is in hypogonadism. That isn't always the case and they should have been looked at individually. But anyway, so essentially those using on inclomaphene either receive 12.5 milligrams daily or 25 milligrams daily. Those on clomiphene received 50 milligrams every other day. Already there's another issue there in that they just lumped the 12.5 milligram group with the 25 milligram group, so we can't really make conclusions from which dose is most effective. Another issue with the study is they didn't really look at the side effects that tend to make people avoid clomiphene, which is visual side effects as well as emotional side effects and just well-being while on clomiphene. As a lot of people say, they experience emotional side effects from clomiphene, and unfortunately this wasn't looked at. But the hypothesis at this point in time is that zuclomiphene, the one stereoisomer of clomiphene, is the reason for this side effect, since it is a weak estrogen receptor agonist. But again, that's just a hypothesis. So let's look at the results. If we look at testosterone changes, we can already see that in the inclomiphene group, they had higher baseline 
and testosterone levels. Technically, they wouldn't be defined as hypogonadal. And this is perhaps why the change is not so dramatic, but it did reach statistical significance as defined by the p-value. The clonophene citrate group also reached statistical significance when looking at the change in testosterone, and the p-value was even more significant. Now, if we look at luteinizing hormone, or LH, those in the enclomiphene group had lower LH levels to start off with when comparing it to those in the clomiphene group. Only those in the enclomiphene group actually reached statistical significance when looking at the change in luteinizing hormone. And the same goes for FSH. It didn't reach statistical significance in the clomiphene group. So what would that mean? Well, an improvement in LH and FSH, LH being so intricately linked to intratesticular testosterone, would indicate that production of testosterone would increase with an increase in luteinizing hormone if, if the testicular Leydig cells are still sensitive to LH, and an increase in FSH would mean more follicle production and thus better fertility outcomes. What is interesting to note, however, is that the change in estradiol was drastic in the enclomiphene group, which was not expected since it was thought that the enclomiphene component of clomid would not have such drastic estrogenic effects. And I tried to come up with a reason why enclomiphene might have this drastic effect. And it might be due to the fact that clomiphene citrate was actually shown to inhibit 3-beta-hydroxy-dehydrogenase activity. And this enzyme would be important for the creation of something like estrogen via the adrenal pathway. Furthermore, if enclomiphene is a better receptor antagonist, this would lead to perhaps a buildup in estrogen as it's not binding to the receptors. That's just hypothetical. And it would have been interesting if they looked at side effects such as the emotional side effects to see if this change in estrogen had a clinical change in the participants. If we look at fertility markers, it was demonstrated that both enclomiphene and clomiphene improved sperm motility, but only enclomiphene increased the total motile sperm count. And this might be due to the fact that enclomiphene resulted in an increase in FSH. So what can we take away from this study? Well, it's a small retrospective study with multiple limitations, but it would indicate that both enclomiphene and clomiphene result in the same amount of increase in total testosterone production. However, enclomiphene is better at increasing gonadotropin levels, such as LH and FSH. It would also indicate that enclomiphene increases estrogen more than clomiphene does, and whether or not this has side effects would be something to look out for. If we look at anecdotes around enclomiphene, a lot of people commonly recommend using something like aromazin 6.25 milligrams every other day or every three days when using enclomiphene. And they say it's because of this increase in estrogen that enclomiphene causes. And if I draw on personal experience, I did a personal experiment with enclomiphene, and I'll perhaps post the results some, somewhere, but yes, it did increase my testosterone level. However, it also increased my estrogen level. The only side effect I got from it was tingly feeling in my nipples. And this could be due to the fact that whilst clomiphene is a selective estrogen receptor modulator, or enclomiphene is, perhaps its effects at estrogen antagonism are more central than peripheral, and therefore this increase in estrogen might bind to peripheral receptors such as those found in breast tissue. Now, if we take all of this data and come to an opinion about enclomiphene, if you're using enclomiphene purely because you want to increase testosterone levels, clomiphene does it just as well. The only reason you would use enclomiphene as opposed to clomiphene, as shown by the data, is if you have side effects to clomiphene. Now, a lot of studies haven't elucidated many side effects from enclomiphene, but that doesn't mean they don't exist since they weren't really reporting on them in any of the research papers I've looked at. They were just looking at serum markers. If you're looking for better fertility outcomes, it would seem that enclomiphene is a better option. And this could be uh, due to the fact that it increases your gonadotropins, but also due to the fact that estrogen still is quite necessary in 
fertility. And we know this because of aromatase inhibitor therapy used to improve fertility. It's been shown that with aromatase inhibition, motility is negatively impacted. And that's why if you're using aromatase inhibitors to improve your fertility, it's recommended to stop the aromatase inhibitor one week before conception. Again, this might show that estrogen, whilst in too high amounts, might be negative for fertility, but in too low amounts could also be negative for fertility. But at this point, there isn't too much data to come to a definitive conclusion. But I'd like to know what you guys think about the study and what your opinions on clomiphene versus inclomiphene are, whether you've experienced the side effects that people talk about when speaking about clomiphene, and also what your experience with inclomiphene clomiphene is. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this topic and thank you for watching.